uh, students uh, today we will be actually looking into uh, your first experiment which is uh, nothing but your spectrum analyzer and uh, we will look as to what are the uses of it and how we are going to take the best use of the spectrum analyzer the model is rsa306 uh, so just uh, give me a moment as uh, we get started with the presentation okay so this is going to be your code for your lab which is ece71 um, it is your wireless and mobile communication lab and uh, this is going to be your first experiment study of basic operation of spectrum analyzer okay now what is the aim of this uh, program it is nothing but to study the basic operation okay of a spectrum analyzer and analyze various parameters of fm signal now fm signal is nothing but your frequency modulated signal and we will just uh, look into few details involved and uh, what is exactly needed for the operation okay and uh, this is used for viewing rf signals in frequency domain it converts time domain signals into frequency domain for display and analysis now this is very important now even in our cell phones we do have fm uh, signals right but we cannot do any analysis so using this device okay we will be able to analyze and we will be able to check as to how these signals are responding what is going to be the delay and uh, the related parameters spectrum analyzer displays power levels with accuracy of approximately about 0.5 decibels okay now i have just put up here for your reference okay and uh, a small match the following to be done here with regards to measurement categories and what kind of instrument we are using to measure the same okay we have power frequency spectrum transmission uh, then we have uh, time characteristics then modulation characteristics towards the right hand side what kind of instrument you are going to use okay so of course for our spectrum we are going to use spectrum analyzer right so we will see this matched up in the upcoming slide so your power can be measured using power meter then frequency can be using your frequency counter spectrum can be measured using spectrum analyzer then your transmission can be analyzed using network analyzer then time characteristics using oscilloscope and your modulation characteristics using modulation analyzer so before we get started i want you to just have a look at these waveforms okay these are different types of waveforms uh, which can uh, actually go uh, high and low these are complex uh, signals with respect to time and amplitude so we can measure the power okay so if we can see the signals in uh, uh, in time axis and frequency axis you know uh, this is how if we actually distribute these signals in a different level okay so this is how you will be able to see fine this i have just put up for your reference where you can actually see as to how these signals okay these signals when you see from front view how it is and when you see the signals from the side view um, how it looks okay so that different categories here right with respect to frequency time and uh, amplitude right so let's uh, just look at them and let's try and understand as to how we can go about with the experiment the frequency versus level this is done using spectrum analyzer normally it is taken up with frequency domain and your level which is amplitude okay the height of the signal is Uh, corresponding to time versus level okay and this is done using your oscilloscope 
and the domain that is going to be used here is time domain as we know there is frequency domain time domain right and modulation domain so here okay uh, in between frequency and time okay that's what you can see the arrow mark here frequency and time so you have frequency versus time so this is uh, for your modulation analyzer and this is done using your modulation domain so just a brief uh, introduction as to what is time domain frequency domain and modulation domain so time as we all know it it changes with respect to t so t not being the initial point t not t1 t2 t3 so it goes on so time the signal changes with respect to time if a signal has many frequency elements the analysis is very difficult so that is one downside of time domain next with respect to frequency domain each element of a complex signal can be separated easily because they are uh, not bound to time they are bound to only frequency so if i know the frequency of a signal according to the frequency i can separate you know different signals so that's how we use filters we design filters wherein the frequency of interest can only be obtained or can be rejected low level distortion signals can be detected and uh, spurious elements can be measured so this is one um, parameter that we can think of modulation domain changes in frequency can be seen okay and modulation accuracy can be analyzed changes in amplitude cannot be seen here in modulation whatever is the signal level the height of the signal cannot be seen but rest of the things such as you know the changes in frequency if it's if it's low shifting to a lower frequency or it's shifting to a higher frequency all these can be actually seen so these are some examples of your time domain signals okay time domain and frequency domain and modulation domain so that you get an idea as to what these signals are okay so these are your continuous wave forms uh, your frequency uh, modulated signal and your amplitude modulated signal so these are modulated with respect to frequency so as the frequency goes high the signal comes too close and uh, with your amplitude modulation you can see that there is a change in height of the signal with respect to time all these are with respect to time next frequency domain as you can see okay uh, you can see that as the frequency increases you know they they come close to each other and uh, uh, these are the levels of signals similarly your modulation um, domain signals so let's move on to the next one uh, which is a very important uh, uh, slide for our experiment okay which is the block diagram so you have an input signal here and then it has an rf input uh, attenuator it has to pass through a filter as i told you filter is designed based on what kind of signals we are interested in so if the signals okay that i am interested in is of higher bandwidth then i'll have to design my filter in such a way that it can analyze those signals and and take out or filter out only those signals then these are passed out to something called mixer and mixer has another input called local oscillator okay so we need a local oscillator so these combines okay and uh, it it is again you know moving on to another section called if gain and this is again your attenuator that you see after your if gain so attenuator is used for you know uh, getting the signals degraded then you have your if filter okay intermediate frequency filter then your logarithmic amplifier then we have an envelope detector which will actually take only the outline of your waveform then all these are actually given as input to your video filter now in order to see the signals i do not have any option so what i will do is i will connect it to a monitor okay once i connect it to the monitor then i will be able to see these signals right so this is your entire block diagram of your uh, spectrum analyzer so right from input signal to viewing the signals it has a lot of filters and then uh, it has um, envelope detectors and then it has amplifiers now getting on to some uh, basic uh, information with regards to your spectrum analyzer as i mentioned previously your spectrum analyzer model's name is rsa 306 right 
So your RSA is nothing but your real time spectrum analyzer and the model number is 306. And uh, it is actually capable of uh, measuring from nine kilohertz to 6.2 gigahertz, which is a uh, high range of frequency that can be analyzed, right? And uh, it has uh, levels of dBm from plus 20 to minus 160. Some of the key features that I've pointed out here is um, it can handle about 27 spectrum and signal analysis measurements standards. So if you can see, you know, this device can handle a lot of measurement uh, parameters. So I will be showing that in the tool and you will be able to understand in a much better way. Options for mapping, modulation analysis, Bluetooth, WLAN standards, all these can be supported. All these are supported. Then real-time spectrum or display to minimize time taken on transient and interference hunting. So these are some of the features. So you can, you have a display Okay, you have an interference where you can actually check exactly as to what's happening in real time. You can stop a signal and you can analyze as to how can I improve the signal. Basically, communication is all about um, the signal being transferred or communicated without loss from the source to the destination. Then we have APIs, which is application programming interface included for uh, Microsoft Windows environments. Okay, so this is about your software. Then uh, you have your toolbox uh, integrated with MATLAB. Some of the applications that we will be using is uh, with regards to um, academics, which is currently what we are doing, right? For the purpose of education. Then we have um, maintenance, installation, and repair in the factory or field. So these are, you know, some of the things that I had um, thought of in in sharing with all of you before we get started with the experiment. So before we get started, you know, I want you to actually uh, concentrate on my screen here. You will have something called uh, Signal View PC. Okay, so you will have to. Click on it. So once you click on the icon here, so this is how it's going to open. you have to click on this icon here, which says Tektronics Signal View PC. Double click on this. Initially, we wouldn't have all these windows. So what I will do is I will just close them so that it becomes uh, easy for you all to understand. Okay. 